The Steel Rain DLC is almost here, and there are important events to keep in mind. I also want to talk about Nuclear Winter and the recently announced new legendary effects. It's news time! Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. I'm back for another round of news and I will try my best to keep you organized with the storm of events coming next week. Yep, the Steel Rain DLC is releasing on July 7 and around this time there's at least 7 events you probably don't want to miss. But don't worry, I will provide you all the dates, details and even a calendar to simplify things. Anyway, I will finally talk a bit about Nuclear Winter and Bethesda's decision to shut it down, as well as the ongoing petition to keep it alive. Then I will go over the official details Bethesda shared yesterday in their weekly Inside the Vault about new legendary effects coming with the DLC. This news video includes way less points than usual, but more extensive ones. Alright then, let's do this! The countdown has begun as we are less than one week ahead of the Steel Rain DLC release, but what you are probably not aware off is how many things are happening all at the same time, pretty much, in a very short period of time. From July 6 to the 8th, there are at least 7 major events and releases happening. I took the freedom to make a list just for you, and for myself too. I like to keep things organized, so here's a helping hand. Anyhow, I will also talk about each one of them separately to give you all the details you may need. So, starting with the challenge event, a coming storm live since June 15. This one is ending on July 6, right before Steel Rain arrives, and unique rewards for this event are 7 in total, in case you are not certain yet. We started with the Brotherhood of Steel backpack skin, which unlocked for everyone for free in the Atomic Shop on June 15, and it's also a key requirement for the daily challenges. Then in the first week you could unlock this awesome Brotherhood of Steel Peepoy skin with the camouflage large texture and the Brotherhood logo in red. Pretty nice. In this past week, the reward was a player icon, which is this one. Nothing too fancy, it's just a close-up of a power armor helmet. Now, in this ongoing and final week, players can unlock three different Brotherhood of Steel flags. However, two of them look extremely similar, so it kind of generated confusion and made some people think there were only two flags to claim when in reality, as you can see, there are three instead. Now, if you unlocked at least two of the weekly challenges, you can auto-unlock the Brotherhood of Steel Recon Helmet. It will show on your armor bench under headwear for crafting, but there are two of them, so keep in mind which one are you looking for. It seems like Bethesda loves to confuse us with so many names out there. Why name two helmets with basically the same name, huh? Yeah, the new helmet from this challenge is named BOS Recon Helmet, while the other one from the real Recon armor set is called Brotherhood of Steel Recon Helmet. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison to make things crystal clear about the differences. First of all, the shapes of the helmets are different, but the main difference is that the new one has a huge attached lamp on the left side, and the other one doesn't have any light. Alright, moving forward, we have the Bonus Challenge Week event, which began in this past Tuesday, June 29, and it will be live until next Tuesday, July 6. So if you are still not done with Season 4, make sure to log in every day as much as possible and work on that final push to collect as many rewards as possible. At least now you have bonus challenges every day to make things a bit easier. On the same day, you can expect the Steel Rain public test server to close doors. There is no official date for this one yet, but in almost all previous tests, Bethesda closed the servers one day before the official update went live. As such, this time it should be no different, but let's wait and see. 
Now, on July 7, that's when the fun begins. First of all, Season 4 Cold Steel will go on until the last minute of Update 27, just like it happened with the past few seasons. Plus, Bethesda already confirmed Season 4 is indeed ending on July 7. There is no space for doubt here. In the same day, Season 5 Escaping from the 42nd Century will take over the scoreboard and replace Cold Steel as soon as the Steel Rain patch goes live, of course. Again, all in the same day, Wednesday, July 7. This new DLC will bring lots of new content, such as new Brotherhood of Steel missions, legendary crafting, legendary power armor, a new vendor merchant, new gear, and so much more. Lastly, on July 8, you can enjoy another Prevere event. This time, it will be a mystery pick. The sale will be live all weekend long, as per usual, ending on July 12. Well, as you can see, there's plenty of dates and events to remember for this next week. I hope it helped, and I say, bring it on! With the important dates to remember out of the way, now let me inform you about the upcoming Legendary Effect updates. There are obviously spoilers in this point, but most of it is about what has been officially disclosed already. Plus, there are way too many additions and reworks to discuss in one point alone. I could make an entire video just about this, but for now, take a closer look at the upcoming changes on the Fallout wiki. All the entries with this purple icon are either new or modified. If my math doesn't fail me and the data there is correct, there are exactly 40 updates coming with Steel Rain for legendary effects alone. It's insane. It seems like Bethesda really worked hard here to try and make the gear system more balanced and diverse, but I'm not so sure the new additions and reworks will make a huge difference in the end. How so? Well, in my opinion, most of them are kinda irrelevant, for the lack of a better word. What I mean is that most do not bring enough endgame value to compete with the most popular effects we have right now. However, there are exceptions. From the nine new effects Bethesda revealed in their latest Inside the Vault article, I must confess that some of them will introduce brand new builds and diversity is always a plus, isn't it? Starting by the Aristocrat effect for weapons, players can lock up to 50% more damage at 29k caps, and this effect can pair perfectly with the Aristocats effect for armor too, which boosts damage and energy resistance by up to 20 per piece. That's 100 extra defense per set, my friends. Not bad at all. It's just a pity Caps builds will affect the economy and dynamic of the game, since such players will do the impossible to save and never spend a cent again. Because if they do, they lose both damage and defense. That's no bueno. No, no, no. Well, another promising new effect is Gormans, which can boost your weapon damage up to 24% the higher your hunger and thirst bars are. Hmm, food builds wild dreams are about to come true. By the way, there is also a new armor effect called Overeaters, which increases your damage reduction up to 6% per piece as you fill up your hunger and thirst bars. That's up to 35% damage reduction per set pretty good too. Anyway, as you've probably noticed by now, Bethesda is enabling brand new ways of building your character, and that's a positive thing in my view. It gives you more choices and more freedom. Anyhow, there's also the reworked mutants effect. Now it grants you 5% more damage per mutation. It caps at 5 mutations though, at least this one is reliable. It delivers a steady 25% damage bonus if you have 5 mutations, so we cannot complain that much. Another decent new effect is the Juggernauts, ideal for full HP builds and to pair with Vanguard armors, for example. You can unlock up to 25 damage at 95% HP or higher, you just need to make sure you never receive damage at all, or else that damage boost is never going to trigger and then it becomes useless in the end. Pretty much. Lastly, I could not leave Assassins out, it got reworked as well, and now it grants 50% more damage versus humans, per armor piece, obviously. Before it was only 10% per piece, so it received an astonishing 500% buff. 
Wow! If you often PvP in adventure mode, then having an assassin's armor set is now more important than ever. Well, to finish off this point, there are many other reworked effects and new ones too, but these are definitely my primary effect highlights. What about you? What's your favorite one so far? Do let me know in the comments below. Okay, now it's time to talk about Nuclear Winter. It's something some of you guys have been asking me to cover and so far I haven't. Sorry about that. There's no particular reason though. It's just I had to make a break from the internet for a few weeks and Bethesda made such announcement when I was not here, when I was not around. Now, as most of you surely know, Nuclear Winter is closing in about two months in September. A few weeks ago, Bethesda made a huge post announcing their decision to discontinue this battle royale mode. They pointed out three main reasons to back up their difficult choice, coating. The first one hints that most 76 players are not exactly interested in Nuclear Winter. They played wisely with the words here by claiming players prefer to explore other aspects of the game while comparing it to a PvP mode, they are indirectly saying the interest level in Nuclear Winter is rather low. Well, they have the numbers, the data, the profit values, so they surely know better than us what's going on, but for them to say such a thing, it surely means the Nuclear Winter player base has been declining over time and it's far from being in a good place. The second reason is more or less the same. They claim that filling lobbies without sacrificing the queue time also became tougher. This one leads to the first point, lack of interest, lack of players, fewer players per lobby and so on. Now, I'm not entering the blame game here because there's a huge list of reasons that led players to just say no, no, no and stay away from Nuclear Winter as far as possible. I think that hackers and lack of updates are surely the main reasons of why players didn't want to enter the Ring of Fire. And well, as a friend told me, you can't expect a product to flourish when there's zero effort and work put into it. He was obviously referring to the lack of updates. Uh, we had like zero updates in the last, what, six, eight months, maybe even longer. Yeah, talking about updates, Bethesda claimed this was one of their main reasons to shut down Nuclear Winter because it seems like they had issues working on both modes at the same time. They struggled a lot to update Adventure and Nuclear Winter and obviously they had to make a choice. Needless to say that this reason screams lack of resources from every corner. But then again, it's not like Nuclear Winter was a monetization channel, at least not directly, plus it was never as popular as Adventure or Private Worlds, so their priorities are obvious and logical in a sense. No, I'm not defending their decision, not at all. I'm just saying it's all about the money, money, money. Money, money. Let's be real here. According to Bethesda, players were not interested or engaged to play Nuclear Winter, which probably means this game mode as a product turned out to be a failure over time, and failures are expensive to keep in a business world. Remember, they have separate servers for Nuclear Winter, and in my view, I think they need them for what's coming, for custom worlds, also known as the Antina mode, which is supposed to be a new game mode coming this autumn. So as you can see, everything is starting to make sense, the puzzle pieces are coming together. When you have to work with limited resources, you are forced to prioritize and make assertive decisions. And I do believe this is exactly what happened here. Moving forward, Bethesda also announced that Nuclear Winter rewards will get distributed through event pools, such as boss and seasonal events like Treasure Hunters. They also confirmed players will receive per coins depending on their achieved overseer ranks. Six coins per rank to be exact. There is a maximum of 600 per coins though per character, so if you reached a rank above 100, you will not get any further coins than, well, 600 is uh, the max, which is exactly uh, the respective amount for rank 100. Expect this compensation to arrive in September as well. Now, Bethesda turned out a beacon of hope for the PvP community by stating they are working to provide PvP methods 
for players who like to fight other Vault Dwellers. This possibly means they have a replacement mode or feature in mind, but it will surely take a while to know what it is. In fact, Bethesda said later this year they will unveil details on how players can experience 76 in more ways. What does that mean, though? Well, for me, this is hinting again towards custom worlds. There are rumors that PvP will be one of the main options, so who knows? Maybe players will be able to host their own nuclear winter matches there, or some sort of custom arena or battleground. Uh, yeah, getting ahead of myself, isn't it? <laughs> Meanwhile, players started an online petition asking Bethesda to spare Nuclear Winter from total annihilation. More than 2,200 players have already signed in favor of this petition, so if you would like to participate or sign it in this case to try and save the Ring of Fire in 76, then go ahead and check it out. I'm leaving the link in the video description below. Now, to conclude this point, I think the decision to remove or delete stuff when it goes wrong is bound to happen. It's like their code of action at this point in time. Fixing takes too much work and resources, so just take it out. It's basically what they have been doing, a lot lately actually. It happened with the survival mode, it happened with the Mischief Night event, and so many other things over time. I think PvPers really need their space in 76, where PvP has always been a core rule since the very beginning. However, as we all know, most players go around uh, in adventure mode with pacifist mode enabled and they have no interest in fighting whatsoever. So in my view, it's important to have a mode or a feature where all these competitive players can gather and fight one another. Otherwise, I'm afraid that griefing, harassment and the so-called raiders role-playing will increase substantially once Nuclear Winter is finally shut down. Do I agree or not with their decision? Well, it depends a lot on the numbers, which are not public. If, in fact, the numbers are very, very low. You know, if the mode is basically dead, then yes, I agree the mode should go, because if nobody wants to play it, then it doesn't really justify all the resources they are using to keep it alive. On the other hand, if the player base is still substantial, and they just don't want to keep it alive because it's not convenient, because it's not part of their strategy anymore, then I would not agree with their decision. But since we don't know exactly what's going on in the background, we don't even know the numbers, the figures, so it's it's difficult to form an accurate opinion. But I definitely think PvPers need their own mode or feature to play and fight. That's for sure. <laughs> Last week, Bethesda detected a major issue with the Messenger event. After investigating, they decided to disable the event for the time being. That was over a week ago. So far, there hasn't been any updates, which probably means they are not sure how to fix the problem, at least for now. Anyway, you have probably wondered what so serious happened to make Bethesda disable an event that hardly anyone does. Well, that's because this bug is very disruptive, Basically, the Mr. Messenger becomes hostile and it will attack players for all eternity. Holding the event hostage or forcing it to fail if players do nothing about it and the time eventually runs out. There is a way to fix this bug though, or there was when it was live. I was lucky or unlucky enough to first experience it about two weeks ago and then I also uh, ended up finding the solution here together with Mad Dog Rot. Uh, I can confirm that dying or forcing other enemies to down the robot will reset him, allowing his friendly status to return, which will then resume the event as shown in the footage. Lastly, do let me tell you that I haven't seen this event live on the public test servers, not even once, so I suspect there is no fix coming for this event anytime soon. Ooh, that was a long one, and far from what I usually do with my news. I normally don't go so in depth, but today I had to do it. We had some extensive topics to go over, and I don't like to rush or leave things behind to be said. Anyway, today's random bug is Graham and Charlie the Moo Moo enjoying their vacation at Foundation. 
perfect rhyme. I mean, they literally stayed at this watchtower behind Sam for some 10-15 minutes. As long as I was there, they were bugged, literally walking in circles, back and forth, back and forth. I even went away from my keyboard and yeah, they never left. They like it there with the good settler folks. Can't blame them. Hmm? Anyway, that's everything for now. I am Marta Branco. I just started a pool about Steel Rain mission guides. Would you like to see them or not? Go ahead to my community tab if you wish to vote. And that's it. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't yet so you don't miss anything. And as usual, a huge shout out to all my lovely members and patrons. You guys are the best. Well, it's time for me to go. I will see you very, very soon in the next video. Until then, take care. Adios, bye bye!